There are many people, myself included, who don't have particularly happy memories of maths lessons at school. We tend to shy away from numbers. But when it comes to financial planning, that's a bad idea. Everyone needs a basic grasp, at least, of the mathematics of investing. Let's start with some simple retirement numbers. Say you'd like to retire on £40,000 a year in today's money. Assuming you don't want to risk your capital eroding before you die, a rough rule of thumb is that you should withdraw a maximum of 4% a year from your portfolio. For that, you'd require a pension pot of around £1 million. You need to know how much to invest each month and for how long, assuming different rates of return. And you'll see from this table that the longer you invest for and the higher your return, the less you need to put aside every month. It's all about compounding, the concept of interest on interest. As Benjamin Franklin once put it, the money that money earns, earns money. Today's news media is full of mind-bogglingly large numbers, such as a 100 billion euro bailout or a trillion dollar debt mountain. The temptation then is to be blasé about small numbers and even a little disappointed in them. But instead of saying, for example, my portfolio only returned 3% more than inflation last year, you need to remember that small numbers really do add up. Imagine £100,000 invested in each of three different portfolios, delivering returns of 1, 3 and 5% per year after inflation. After 30 years, that sum will have grown to around 135000 240000 and £430,000 respectively. So, seemingly small differences in the compound rates of return, also known as geometric returns, convert into big differences in terms of financial outcomes. Now, we can be a little unrealistic about how fast we expect our investments to grow. If you want to get rich quick, try gambling, but you're as likely to fail as you are to succeed. Investing is more like get rich slow. Over the last 12 years, for instance, cash has delivered a return of around 1% above inflation, government bonds around 1.5% and UK equities a shade under 5%. So, as investors, we have to be realistic. We also need to calculate compound returns and to visualise the impact of cost on final outcomes. And that can be quite complex. But a useful tip is something called the Rule of 72. If you take the compound or geometric rate of return and divide it into 72, you can estimate the number of years it will take for you to double your money. So, for example, with a 2% rate of return, it will take about 36 years, or with a 4% return, 18 years, and so on. Alternatively, the Rule of 72 can be used to establish what rate of return is required to double your money over a specific number of years. It's vital to keep the costs of investing as low as possible. That's things like advisor charges, taxes and transaction costs. Clearly, the less you pay out, the better in the long term. Another big factor investors need to be aware of is inflation. Used in reverse, the Rule of 72 can illustrate just how damaging even low rates of inflation can be to the value of your investments. You can see from this table that 3% inflation will halve the purchasing power of your capital every 25 years or so. In other words, prices will double in that time. Now, one final concept you need to grasp is that by reducing the volatility of your portfolio, in other words, narrowing the range of returns experienced by diversifying across markets and asset classes, you can increase the compound return or geometric return you can expect from that portfolio. Just look at the relative values of portfolio A and the less volatile portfolio B after two years. Diversifying makes mathematical sense. So what conclusions can we draw from this short maths lesson? First of all, time is your friend and small numbers matter. You need to keep costs low, beware the corrosive effects of inflation 
and diversify your portfolio to reduce volatility. Finally, a take-home point for non-mathematicians like me. We might not have enjoyed maths at school, but to be successful investors, we need to understand a few simple mathematical concepts. Invest a little time in grasping those concepts and you'll be very glad you did when you come to retire.